All right, we're going to go ahead and transition over to you in three, two. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Softbody. This is a little indie game made by Zeke Verant uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we're just going to get started, and I'll explain some of the mechanics as we go. All right. Uh, go. So this is the soft game mode of soft body, which is the easier section of the game. Yeah, there's uh, three chapters that have a handful of levels in each of them. Uh, basic idea of this game is you control two different characters at the same time. This level right here is a good example of that. Uh, I have a yellow body, which is my main body, and then a red body, which is my ghost body. And I control each of them with one hand. I can split them apart, or I can have them stay together like they are right now. And they each do unique things, accomplish unique goals within each level. So you can see my main body, the yellow one. Uh, it paints walls, and it paints those little circles. That's its main purpose. And it also defeats one type of enemy, which is a giant square enemy with uh, four sections. And then my ghost body, the red body, it pushes these orbs along their path. And it also defeats most of the rest of the enemies in the game. Uh, my main body in soft game mode is the only one that can take damage. My ghost body can take as many hits as I need it to. And whenever it gets hit, it kind of warps back to my main body. And then I can't use it for a second. So we kind of just go about the introductory levels, doing them fairly quickly. A uh, major theme of the game is as soon as you accomplish one goal, more stuff pops in for you to do. And you'll see that in several levels. Uh, there's a couple levels like this one where I only have my main body available. Uh, tower, you just kind of wiggle along the middle there. Uh, and those are just for... Those are kind of scattered throughout for levels where you don't need your ghost at all, so it does not appear. After I do that uh, new type of enemy that we just saw, a kind of spiral that spawns bullets as you do it, then I split apart and do the rest of this level. Here's a good example of a place where you need to split because as you can see, your main body cannot go through walls. It is kind of stuck and trapped in this box. Your ghost body can phase through walls in soft game, so you don't have to worry about it getting stuck. We have several different types of uh, bullet spawners. This one right here is what I call a turret. It just uh, spins around in a slow circle and delivers a constant stream of bullets. There's also snipers, which with, when you get within a certain radius of them, they will track your position and then fire a single shot at you after a set amount of time. And there's one or two others, like the spiral enemy that we saw. Uh, you always start each level without your ghost, and you generally have to retrieve it from a set location that it spawns in. You cannot use it until you do that. So here I had to go up all the way to the top of this level to get my ghost, and then I could start pushing this orb. Oop. I tried to sneak down a little too early there, and got caught by the turret. And yeah, whenever you are not moving your ghost, it will automatically go back and combine with your main body, and then you can control both of them with your left hand. Uh, so sometimes, in levels coming up especially, you'll see me move around my ghost in a rhythmic motion so that it stays where it's at instead of coming back to me. There's a lot of levels like this and the next one oop, where you oop, start in a box. And as I was about to mention, you saw there, when that happens, you can actually break out sometimes. In most of the time, it's bad, because then you have to go the long way to paint the initial wall that you start out in. But after that, it's a very small hurdle. No big deal. Uh, you can see with these enemies, these black circles, whenever they bounce off of a wall or the edge of the screen, they spawn a set ring of bullets. The big ones spawn eight, and the little ones spawn six. And it'll always be in a hexagon or a uh, octagon, respectively. I 
kind of have to deal with them having spawned a bunch on screen because I was a little bit oh I was a little bit slow uh, taking care of the first two parts. If you touch them or you touch their bullets, uh, you die and you have to start over. I can use the way that they spawn because they always have set directions and angles to kind of sneak around them once I know where they're going to be. There we go. And the orbs that you push along these paths, they are, uh, are pretty lenient. They have uh, a lot of inertia, so it takes some standing right next to them to get them started moving. But then once they are moving, you can kind of leave them alone, and a lot of the time, the orb will just get to the end of its path and take care of itself. You'll see that at the end of this level. I take care of the top and bottom uh, shell enemies. Oops. This is a good example of those, actually, like I mentioned. For these 4x4 four four enemies, you take out the outer four sections with your main body, and then you have to kill the center with your ghost. And most of the time when you are combined and you're controlling both at the same time, you don't have to worry about what you're touching because your ghost will kill most of what it touches. The exception is those big uh, 16 square enemies that there's one of those at the top of this giant level. This happens to be the first boss level in the game. Uh, the final level in each chapter is sort of a boss. This is the only true boss, which we'll see in the second section of this level. There we go. So after you take care of everything here, you get the actual two snakes themselves, which the level is name named after. Uh, and they're being a bit of a pain right now. So for these, you have to go near their head to get them in a damageable state, and then you have to touch their weak point three times each. There we go. So that's chapter one. And we move right on. Uh, we're able to skip the cutscene section into chapter two. There's like uh, several minutes of downtime when you're playing the game for the first time where nothing really happens. You just kind of move around freely. But fortunately, we can skip right over that. There we go. So I'm going to take care of these four center enemies. First thing, because that's the main priority. Those are the most likely things to kill us. And then after that, we can take care of the walls that spawn. Take care of the last two of these diamonds. And then paint this, and that's that level. Uh, this level introduces a new enemy, which are these circles. Unlike the circles we saw earlier, which spawn bullets, these, once you get within a certain radius of them, uh, they turn into triangles and start chasing you much, much faster. So I kind of, in this and the next couple levels that have them, manipulate them into certain positions so that I don't have to worry about them spinning up and chasing me while I'm taking care of stuff like the spiral, which I unfortunately failed to do there. There's a lot of situations where you can have bullets coming at you or enemies coming at you from separate directions, so you kind of have to weave in between them. And it can be a toss-up. You can go for really, really risky stuff, and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you don't. It's kind of a gamble. Like here, I manipulate them a bit more poorly so that they'll be kind of in the way of the spiral, but their behavior after that kind of worked out. All right, on to Triangle Goons Part 2. There's a lot of uh, repeating motifs in the game that are kind of callbacks to earlier levels and uh, foreshadowing of later levels as well. There we go. Now I just have two shell enemies to take care of. And I managed to get kind of lucky. When you get two of the same uh, circle enemies like that kind of stacked on top of each other, they'll pretty much always perform the same behavior. So it's like having one enemy where there's actually two, and it makes it a lot easier to deal with them. Okay, This is the first level. You can see that uh, dotted line there, with that giant circle with the dotted line. Uh, that's a zone. Whenever you enter a zone, certain things happen. So for that example, uh, whenever you're in a zone, 
it will periodically spawn a giant circle of bullets. Uh, I actually avoided it on that screen until the very end of the level uh, because zones typically, at least those, those kind of zones, only activate when your main body is in them. So your ghost can move throughout them freely and not have to worry about activating them. Uh, there's different zones later that we'll see that do not have that behavior, and whenever you enter them with either, it'll be a problem. This is a very particular strategy that I developed for this level, where you have this snake that kind of chases whichever body is closest to it. So I can manipulate that by having the main body go in the center, and then since these things, both of these lines always turn in a constant radius, uh, they will permanently change my they will permanently chase my main body while my ghost body is free to push the orb and my main body doesn't have to do anything else besides sit there. So there we go, a cheeky little strat. You can see that was one level where I had to move around my ghost in between the two uh, orbs spawning so that it did not teleport back to my main body. If that had happened, I would be kind of stuck and I wouldn't be able to escape the snakes, I would have to take a death and start over. There we go. For this level, I tend to wait for a bullet to hit the very edge of the screen so that I can move past safely. We have three of these like circular spawners with the zones that I was talking about earlier. But if I move in a certain pattern, the two uh, spawners on either side of the level uh, don't really pose a threat for the most part. Here's another example of a level where I have to break out of a wall with my ghost body and have it doing stuff while I avoid these bullets from the spawner with my main body. So we take care of that. And then the final section of this level, we return all to the center and have something similar to what we saw earlier. There we go. All right. Now this gets into some of the more annoying enemies that we see. We've seen these earlier, I think. These squares that will try and get close to you and then shoot homing bullets at you. Uh, they haven't been a problem in earlier levels, but the later section of the game is where they really start to be a pain. Just because uh, the game will throw tons and tons of them at you eventually. And once you get pretty much more than one or two, uh, the homing bullets can be absolutely overwhelming. And you have to worry about really accomplishing the goal of the game to do things uh, simultaneously with each body. You're dodging with one and trying to defeat enemies with the other. Uh, this is a really cool level with a, another super cool strat. You can see these lines all spin at a set speed, and I can get in between them like that and just avoid having to move and deal with them. So I do that several times throughout this level to push this orb along its giant path as quickly as possible. And I can try and cut through there. Didn't quite work. Uh, you can go a little faster if you can get through that gap with your ghost body before it closes. So now I realign my main body uh, with this square, which will be the end path for the orb. And then I just finish up. We have a few donations, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. We have $10 from Anonymous. And no comment on that. And then 25 from Pseudo Trainer saying, so many optionals. Odd run, but was such a blast. Good luck on the good luck to the remaining runners. And also, I noticed Pseudo Trainer wanted to hear himself. Uh, I can turn that off if you want. Oh, either, either way. Uh, so this is the second boss level uh, in the game. You can tell by the massive number of bullets on screen right now. Uh, I actually, there is a strat to get rid of these. And if I die once, I will show that off. For some reason, after you've had the game open for a little while and you've done a bunch of levels in a row, uh, the game likes to have bullets linger where they otherwise wouldn't. So by exiting to level select right there, 
uh, I can just make every bullet on the screen disappear a lot faster. It takes just a second, and it's, it makes this level much easier. So now you'll... Whoop. Okay. There is a strat that I can try and show off here. Okay, there we go. You can hit the center triangle to activate the rest of the level a lot faster by uh, using, abusing your ghost body a little bit. If your ghost takes a hit, it teleports back to you automatically, like I've said, but its hitbox is still active, so it can still take out enemies, like the center triangle. So you can use that to just finish the first phase of this level just a tiny bit faster. There we go. Unfortunately, that circle is not really in a great position, so I'm going to have a lot to deal with in this spiral. All right, not too bad. You can tell uh, these spirals. I think that might be the first time we've seen it. If you leave them alone for long enough, they make a little homing bullet enemy. So I tend to prioritize spirals in levels that have them. We'll see a lot more of that towards the end of chapter three, which we are now on. Never mind the weird uh, level select screen that you just saw there. The game likes to take some different directions. Uh, we could do another donation or two for this level because it's pretty much stuff we've seen before. We'll take this moment to plug uh, that all donations are going to the Able Gamers, and they make peripherals for gamers that uh, with disabilities that might need special peripherals. And so any donations you give go right to that. Shout out to Sable Gamers, honestly. Uh, there's a new mechanic in this level that you can see. This is another level where I only have my main body, and we just have these uh, kind of squares that you kind of eat. There we go. With your main body. So you have to get within a certain proximity of them. They're really similar to the orbs you push along, but you just take care of them with your main body instead. There's a very cool strat for this level. Uh, we do two orb pushes here. We push this along as far as possible before we get crushed by the lines, and then we go down to take care of the bottom shell enemy, and then we can go right back up and catch the orb where it ended up. And that's the fastest way to do that level. You finish it in about two or one and a half rotations of the center line that divides the whole screen. This is one of the worst levels, again, because of these enemies that end up being super, super random. As I mentioned earlier, they tend to try and move closer to you and then fire off a homing bullet once you're within a certain distance of them. But in practice, there's really no telling what they can do. They'll sometimes just move around and shake around the whole screen. They'll sometimes fire a bullet even though it can't even reach you before it disappears. So it's pretty interesting. There we go. Uh, here's another example of these zones that I mentioned earlier. These ones, uh, whenever you move within them, you have a certain amount of time to get out, and then they flash. Uh, and if you're in the zone when it flashes, that will kill you. And if also, if you're in it for a little bit after it flashes, the hitbox of that, or the hurtbox, rather, kind of lingers for a little bit. So you want to be wary of that. So you'll see me just kind of dash through and then get out as quickly as possible. There we go. Once we've taken care of those center sections, I can use my ghost to push along this orb with relative safety. I missed a little section of the wall in the corner, so I'll have to go back for that. And again, if your ghost oh, if your ghost gets hit by the uh, zone, it just teleports back to you for a tiny, tiny little time loss. I got hit, I think, by the bullet turret up there. There we go. Uh, once you've taken care of all the walls and stuff, uh, it's pretty convenient to just kind of hide over here, right here. Because the sniper at the bottom of the screen will notice your ghost and try and shoot at it. And if it moves away from the sniper, it'll target your main body instead. But since you're behind a wall, its bullets can't go through the walls. I'm having a little bit of uh, a hard time with the zones here. There we go. 
That's all set. This is probably the worst level in the game as far as luck goes because you start out with four of these enemies, two of the diamonds and two of the squares. The diamonds shoot just in straight lines and the squares shoot the homing bullets. Uh, but either of them, either type of enemy, can just sit on top of the walls that you need to paint and just not let you at them at all. So you have to just wait for them to move. And like I said, sometimes they'll move, sometimes they'll just fire off five volleys. And there's really nothing you can do about it. So we've had okay luck as far as where they've moved. But a little bit slow on the execution as far as painting walls goes. There we go. This is one of the scarier levels because of the sheer number of those types of square enemies that can appear if you don't take care of these spirals as quickly as possible. These last few levels in Chapter 3 are pretty tough and honestly give you a preview of what you see in Hard Game, the harder section of 25 levels. It gets pretty daunting pretty quickly if you don't know what you're doing and memorize the set order to do things in gonna take care of those just so I don't have to worry about them and then try and form up I've gotten a little off track there we go better to go a little bit slow and live than to have to start the whole level over again especially with a 30 second at best level like this some of the levels only take five seconds so you can do some of the faster strats in them without worrying about it but some levels like this, you really just want to get through. All right, this is the penultimate level in the game. Big what? Can I get a big what in chat? Uh, this theme of this level is you take care of one thing and two more things appear. And so far, you may have noticed that that hasn't happened yet, but that's because I do things in a very, very particular order so that there's the least danger possible to me. So I take care of this set of four circles last push this orb and then like oop, I'll show you in a second so yeah most things won't spawn something but the trigger for the next section of the level where a bunch more stuff spawns is those four circles surrounding the uh, turret there we go alrighty so I can take care of this that uh, shell enemy actually is spawned by the rightmost circle of eight circles that's now surrounding the turret that we saw earlier. There we go. If you do that spiral fast enough, you can get through it without having to worry about a homing enemy spawning. Then, as I mentioned, the left side circle surrounding that turret is the spawn trigger for those two homing enemies and we can take care of those before they can even get a single shot off. So that's good. So now we're on to the final level, which is kind of a pseudo boss. Uh, it, it's another one that gives you a ton of trouble if you don't have a plan for it. And what you might be able to notice right now, my plan is to hide my main body in the corner up here and then take care of everything with my ghost. Because again, your ghost does not take damage. Got a little messy pretty quickly, but we're back on track. It's also a bit of a struggle if you do get mixed up because uh, the level is all monochrome, so you can't tell which is your main and which is your ghost, except by moving them. Uh, most of the enemies that spawn in this level are the homing type, but there's two of the shell enemies, so we can see both of those on the screen now, and we won't get any more of those. Ah. It's a little bit faster to take care of those first, but it's easier to take care of all the homing enemies first. So now we're gonna finish this up and we'll get ready on time. As soon as I take out this last shell enemy. There, time. All right, that is Soft Body. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Soft Game. It's a pretty interesting game and pretty fast paced if uh, you have any interest in learning it. We have a tiny little Discord uh, with some good friends of mine that have done a lot of strat research and stuff on the game. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. 
I believe we have hit the donation incentive for the Halloween level set. All righty. So I'll go on to do that now. We just have some credits. So yeah. Uh, the Halloween level set was added a little while after the game came out, came out by Mr. Verant. Uh, it features some new ideas, some new mechanics, and his focus for the Halloween level set was to create difficult levels without using any bullets. So no bullets, you'll see, just uh, lines and zones. You get to the Halloween level set by typing 666 on the main menu, which is great. Just a fantastic addition, really glad. Uh, so as soon as I hit X to skip here, uh, we can count down on that. So I'll give a countdown, three, two, one, go. So immediately you see we have these orb enemies again, and this time you just push them with your main body. There's no ghost body at all in uh, the Halloween level set. And you have a zone that actually moves and tries to follow you. So you have to worry about that pretty much no matter where you go on screen. And it's very easy, as you can see, with the level design to get stuck in a certain location so that you kind of get trapped by the zone. So I wait in the corner, draw the zone away for a little bit, so I can have a bit of an easier time starting to push this orb along its like leaf-shaped path. There we go, that's the first level. So now we have two zones that are following us, and we're gonna have some more, we're gonna have some more difficult uh, wall patterns to deal with. Oop, I almost got stuck, but I managed to get out of it. There we go. So again, I'm gonna go up to the corner to bait these guys into following me, and then we're gonna go back down to the orb and take care of that. And uh, one theme with the final section of each of these levels, generally the orb has a very convoluted path that it takes to get to the end. So you kind of have to know where it's going in advance. There we go. We have a line here that again kind of bisects the screen depending on your position that you have to deal with. Oop. You can slow things down. Uh, when you are right next to it like that, you can kind of juke it out. And it's actually pretty fun to do. There we go. So I try and get in the center first and then take care of as much as I can and then worry about the line later. There we go. So now we have another orb to push. So I'm gonna lead this guy up here. Ooh, just barely escaped. Nice. There we go. So now we have two zones and a line. So we just keep getting stuff added, you know. Draw these guys up here so I can go around. The hardest part of this section of walls is getting to the center, which I'm not quite sure how we're gonna do. We're gonna have to uh, juke these guys for a while. There we go. A good thing about taking care of lines like that is once you take care of all the walls, uh, you can instantly move where they were once blocking you. So as long as you can just get that last section, uh, you're usually good to go. There we go. There's another orb of, there's another example of the uh, orb momentum where I was nowhere near the orb for the last little bit of line that it had to go to, but it was moving fast enough that it just took care of itself. So we have another type of zone here, as you can already tell, where uh, this line will rotate in one direction unless you're close to the center of it, in which case it will rotate in the other direction. So a pretty easy introduction to that, but now we have two lines, one that you can change the direction of and one that you cannot change the direction of. So we kind of have to manage that as we go about painting these walls. Push it back a little bit. I'm actually kind of... Mm, 
in a precarious situation, but we managed to escape. So now once again, push this back a little bit and get the orb. There we go. Just a little bit at a time. Uh, if you're not careful with this, you can get kind of stuck in a position where you cannot enter the zone to push the line in the opposite direction, and you just kind of get crushed between the two. Now we have two zones, two lines that we cannot change the direction of, so they'll always be kind of going in opposite directions like that. So this requires a lot of juking. This is also the last level in the Halloween set, so it's pretty short and sweet. Just takes a lot of interesting ideas and throws them at you all at once. Get some of these walls. Escape that. There we go. You can see the smaller zone tends to move faster, so you can sometimes uh, juke it out and it will take a while to get back on track moving towards you. But that can be a problem because then you have the big zone which does not have that behavior. Oop. I maybe shouldn't have cut through there between the two lines, which you can do almost all the time, but it's generally tough to get out of once you've done it. There we go. These are back on track, so we'll juke a little bit more. Having a heck of a time trying to get to the orb. But as soon as I finish this orb along its path, that'll be time for the Halloween set. Hmm, there's a couple ways I could go about this. I'll try and stay in the corner as long as I can. There we go. So, time. And there you go. The game <laughs> has a lot of neat visuals like this. And the Halloween screen at the end is one of my personal favorites. Yeah, that's soft body. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Pretty chill run. Uh, pushing orbs along paths. That's it for me. Uh, thanks to Midwest Speedfest for having this game and V6 uh, at the marathon. All right. Got to say, for the Halloween one, I was uh, like, man, that looked difficult. <laughs> Up next, we have Pokemon Puzzle Challenge by Razor Flame. So stay tuned for that.
Bye.